Pittsburgh, so I have so um, this presentation might be like five minutes long because I am just kind of talking and not knowing exactly what I wanted to say. And I am mic'd up and this is weird. So, okay, I'm gonna, all right, I can use this thing now. Okay, so I hope you're here for cataloger, cataloging for non-catalogers. This is, we're talking about how knowing a little bit of cataloging can help anybody in any library job. I do wanna know how many of you are catalogers. There's, wow, okay. So for this, you're not gonna learn much new here, but if you ever need to defend your job to people in power, you can be like, look what I do. So I, I, I think you can get some help from it that way. So I'm Kate Coleman. I have been a Evergreener since 2017. I am part of the Missouri Evergreen Consortium. Um, I have been very uh, active in both our Missouri Evergreen cataloging community and the Evergreen International cataloging community at large. Um, I work at Jefferson County Library. We are right outside of St. Louis. Um, Missouri Evergreen has, I don't know, 60 something library districts, 100 and 200, over 200 library, um, you know, branches and everything across the state of Missouri. So um, we're, we're large. We uh, do a lot of, we are not centrally cataloged. So everybody catalogs for themselves. And um, so it can get chaotic, but I, um, I've been a cataloger for over 20 years, so I kind of know what I'm talking about, but um, we'll see. Everybody can correct me if I'm wrong. So again, I want to remind everybody, I don't have my notes, <laughs> so I'm just winging it here. But so this is uh, everybody in the library world. They're like, oh, my gosh, you're a cataloger. You know, I could never. Um, and this is kind of why. So the stereotype of the cataloger is for many, the hermit hiding in the bowels of the library, counting pages of plates and measuring the heights of books. Yes, everybody knows I always carry my ruler with me. On the rare occasion here, she is led out of the dungeon. It's to be one at meetings who speaks the unintelligible marquees about non-filing characters and second indicator blank. I love that some of you know what that means and everybody, some other people are like, oh my gosh, that's exactly marquees. So um, the catalogers role in the library is to enforce rules that nobody understands and to make things as difficult as possible for everybody. And I can see how people could think that, um, but this is what us catalogers think. So this might be a little flowery, you know, but it kind of gets to the heart of the passion of cataloging. So I'm a librarian. Librarianship is my religion. Libraries are my temple and cataloging is my key weapon to unlock the wealth of wisdom and knowledge stored to the library. Because what we are going to be talking about today is discoverability. That's the main game with cataloging. Our end game is to get things in the hands of the people that want them the easiest. So we're gonna be talking about several different areas of the library. If you are not, you know, if you don't identify yourself as one of these, I'm sorry, um, as a technical services librarian, I can commiserate because we are often underrepresented at conferences, but not at the Missouri Evergreen Conference, we're always very well represented. Catalogers are important in the Evergreen community and that's something that I value a lot. So we're gonna be talking about reference and adult services, youth services, CERC, collection development, IT, which somebody helped me with those slides and I don't know what the words mean. So we'll, you know, we'll go through that together. And then admin. So if I were a reference and, or adult services librarian, why would I need to know any cataloging or you know, how to read a mark record? or something like that. How could that help me be a better reference or adult services librarian? So understanding how the mark fields, before I go on, I will just say that we're going to go through all of this and we're going to, you know, go through the different departments, but then we are going to actually look at cataloging records and look at maybe key fields that you can look at if, you know, you need to, you know, because we're learning about how knowing a little bit of mark can help you in, in your other jobs. So to continue with reference and adult services, understanding how the mark fields work in your ILS can help you find those items, of course, um, that your patrons are looking for. So a reference librarian gave me a quote, knowing how a record bill is built helps me drag things out of the catalog. So um, 
we all know reference librarians, you know, the all important reference interview. Um, you know, you have your standard things that you're asking, you're trying to get getting the patron to the, you know, crux of what they really need. And um, that, that again is dragging the things from the patron and then you can drag the things out of the catalog that you need to help that patron. So, you know, this is your reference interview stuff, approachability, interest, learning, listening and inquiry and searching and then follow up. So this, this is the key to searching. Uh, you can't help your patron if you can't locate the items that you're looking for. So with youth services, um, there are different controlled vocabularies for juvenile items. Now, your library may or may not use these certain um, vocabularies. They are pretty interchangeable, but um, if you happen to be in the catalog and you see these different headings, you'll kind of know that these are spe specifically for children. So, and youth services people, they're usually pretty great. They know about these things. They know that um, there might be different terms that they could be searching if they're a uh, library or consortium uses these kinds of headings. So there's also specific fields in the MARC record that um, designate the reading level. So if you are you have a fourth grader that's coming in looking for AR stuff or you know they're looking for a specific age range or something, you can do a search um, by specific uh, MARC field or you can do a, a keyword search for these different uh, reading level designations that are given by you know, third parties, other people. And um, the, li the children's librarians programming is often based on the materials that are in the catalog, of course. So if they, whoops, if they need to have a presentation or a, a, their story time is on boogers, you know, they're gonna wanna look um, for boogers in the catalog and that the authorized term is mucus, secretions. And we all know that that's exactly what a uh, you know a librarian or patron would look for. You know, importantly, it's important to note that of course, if boogers was uh, searched as a keyword, then this book would come up regardless of if you used mucus and secretions. And now I have said the word boogers more than <laughs> I ever thought I would in one day. But so you know, any any of the children's the children that come in your your child their latest obsession you know trains or boogers. Um, they got a book report that's due, you know, oh, mom, I have a book report that's due at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, oh, okay, that sounds familiar. And, uh, you know, we can help these kids get their science project done and go on to win first prize in the state, whatever, you know. We are important in these children's upbringing and knowledge. Okay, for CERC, um, when you are looking up a title, that information, again, this is all coming back to discoverability. Um, everything kind of stems from that for all of us. But um, when your patron comes up to the desk, you know, I'm sorry, I can't help you find the book that has a red cover. You know, we don't put that in the cataloging records. Um, but you, that information that you're putting in to search for that item is coming straight from that bib record. That's um, what we do. So, um, and another thing that helps if you have faceted searching turned on in your OPAC, um, those facets, those, you know, making your search results smaller and smaller and smaller, that all comes directly from the mark fields in the, in the record. So, um, you know, you might do a search on boogers. Am I gonna use boogers as my example this whole day? <laughs> um, and then your faceted search results come up on the left-hand side and it's like, um, you know, you can, limit it to juvenile books or adult books or, you know, certain authors, all of the authors will come up that have booger books. So um, you can limit it. Um, and those are called faceted searches. And all of that information comes directly from the bib record. And catalogers are the ones that more often than not, um, they assign the location of the item on the shelf. So they are the classification numbers. Your Dewey numbers, um, if you use LC, I'm sorry, um, but we are the ones that assign those Dewey numbers. That can be, you know, we're, I don't know, I'm a public library, so I, I don't have to get too complicated in my Dewey um, numbering. Um, you know, we use fiction and we use juvenile and that kind of stuff, but um, sometimes it can get complicated assigning a Dewey number to a nonfiction book. And again, I think that that's one of those things that People think about cataloging and they think, oh, that's that's pedantic, you know, that's not important, but it, it is. It all comes back to consistently consistency throughout everything. 
Okay. What am I looking at here? Oh, faceted searching. Okay. So again, I'm sorry. I don't have my notes, so I don't even know where what the next slide is or anything. But yes, this is the um, example of faceted searching uh, on the left hand side. This is a an you know um, I'm in a consortium, and my library has faceted searching turned on. Some libraries in my consortium don't. I find that I don't know why they wouldn't because I, I think it's helpful to patrons. But so I did a search on libraries, as you can see, that's why the all the word libraries is highlighted. And then the faceted search all comes up here and it tells you how many items it found. If you want to, you know, limit your limit your uh, results to those things. And as you can see too, even um, your stat caps, no, book plates, digital book plates, they, they have come up on the side there. So, you know, oh, I, kn I know my board member donated a book about Missouri cemeteries, you know, so I put that search in and then I can, you know, and then if I used a digital book plate, I can see, I can limit it to those and then I can find that book, you know, that's one, one way to do that. But this is an example of the faceted search and how it uh, separates things and over on that side, it'll, those are the different things that it will um, like parse out for you. Okay, these are words and I'm gonna believe what they say because I did not make them. But um, how can knowing any part of cataloging a MARC record help it with IT? Um, understanding MARC records, build APIs using MARC fields, okay. I hope that means something to somebody. Using SQL to query the database. Okay, that kind of makes sense to me. Um, knowing when it's a cataloging issue versus something that your IT people can help with. You know, um, your frontline CERC person might be like, this is a book, but it's showing that it's an audio book. So they put in an IT ticket. Well, that's not an IT problem. That's a cataloging problem, you know? So um, your IT, frontline IT people, you know, they if they know a little bit about how the catalog works and, and what cataloging does and translates, um, cause that's what Mark is, it you know uses all these little characters to display it in the front end. So them knowing how to do that or, or what drives that can they can just say, oh, sorry, you need to contact your cataloger for that. IT can't help you with that. So exporting records to vendors for reports and discoverability. And just in general, any of this, I think speaking the language that, that translates to any position in the library. If you kind of know a little bit about the language of MARC and bibliographic records, then um, it can be helpful. And to have that common frame of reference um, and can make the difference in helping the staff because cataloging, I know for me, I say it many times, I say it all the time. I catalog for my staff just as much as I catalog for my patrons because my, my staff is on the front end helping those patrons. So. Um, they are often the middleman in helping those patrons get what they need. Um, in collection development, knowing which mark fields will help you run the most helpful reports to see if you've got a gap in your um, collection. I need more things about boogers. Um, so I need to look up mucus secretions apparently to see if I need to fill in a gap there. Um, and that can help create effective workflows between your catalogers and the collection development team. In my consortium, um, I am the technical services manager and I actually manage our collection development team. We work very close hand in hand. Um, I help them run reports. And um, I think that, you know, they go very well hand in hand to help you identify what needs to be um, put on the shelves. And for admin, I think the, the thing that admin come across most is, you know, they're at the rotary meeting, they're at the um, business, better business meeting or whatever, you know, and they say, well, um, what's the value of the library? And um, knowing how to get the information they need out of the catalog is going to help them be able to translate that to the, the, the everyday person. But I think most importantly, for, for catalogers especially, um, admin people knowing a little bit of cataloging, makes me as a technical services librarian feel supported. I am part of the team as well, even though I am in a dungeon in the back, you know. Um, so if you can speak my language, I can, you know, I feel like I'm a legitimate part of the team. 
this is something we talk about a lot. No catalog is perfect, especially if you're a consortium catalog. Um, but, you know, we as catalogers, we have a stack of books, we have a report we're working on, you know, we see the things that are in front of us. The people, CERC people, you know, li children's librarians, you're the ones that are on the front lines looking up these things, and you're our first course of action sometimes to see that there's a mistake. Um, Diane here, she's in my consortium, and she's um, a CERC guru in our consortium, and I get emails from her all the time, hey, I think these need... Uh, this is duplicated. I think these need merged. Hey, this is showing the wrong um, icon. This this needs parts, which we all know causes havoc. Um, if a patron, which of course affects the CERC people the most, if a patron is having problems uh, putting holds on. So um, this is you helping us as well. We again symbiotic. You know, we're we're one team and all of all of that jazz. How am I doing on time? Okay. Discoverability, a resource sitting on the shelf helps no one unless it's findable. And that's what we do as catalogers. Um, if I have that perfect book about boogers that can help that kid, if it's not cataloged right, you know, then um, that's what we do. Okay, now we're getting in, into the, the, let's really learn how to do what we need to do. So. Um, keep in mind, some of the stuff that I'm going to show you, you may not have the permission to do in Evergreen. Um, and this might be where you would say, um, you would talk to your cataloger and say, hey, I see this is wrong. Can you look in this area and see this or that, you know? But if you if you see something that you need to investigate to look at the, the mark record, um, this is just a regular, you know, you have search results, you click on a title, and these are your tabs that are going to come up. Your default view is probably your item table where all your holdings are, but mark view here is where you can see the bib record. It looks like a bunch of characters because that's what it is, um, but if you scroll down more, you get your title and your author and your subject headings and all of that. So mark view is how you would view your bib record, um, not mark edit. If you're not a cataloger, don't do that. You shouldn't have permission to do that anyway. But, okay. So now we're getting into, these are the things that mean something that can then translate into you knowing a bit of cataloging to help in, in your everyday job. So we've got identification numbers. Everybody knows what an ISBN is, a UPC. So um, ISBNs are generally only on books you know, some videos do have them. Videos, we would use the UPC. Why is this important? Because in Evergreen, those numbers are what drive the icon. No, they drive the cover. That's what, <laughs> they drive the cover. Um, so if your uh, ISBN is incorrect or your UPC, the first one listed is the one that it's going to display. So if that is incorrect, you know, somehow some other random book got a, the first ISBN spot in the bib record. That's why your uh, record is displaying incorrectly. Or, I mean, some other problem, but that's the first thing to investigate. So that's an 020. Your 001, that's your, your TCN. Um, different uh, consortia do different things. I know in Pines, TCN is different than they use OCLC numbers only. Yeah. Um, your 082 is your Dewey number. So if you, um, you know, I just had something last week. I had a, one of my staff say, hey, this library has it in three, uh, 380s and this one has it in 620s. Which one is it? You know, so my first place I would go is to go look in the 082, you know, just to see that's where I would start my investigating and see where it really needed to be. Um, the 250, that's your addition statement. So you want that coin book that is the, 22nd edition or whatever. That's where you're going to look for that. Um, your 264. Um, this is your, so the, the pub date is what I want you to see. The pub date is at the end there, and then your page numbers and how big it is. And, you know, some people, that's important to them. You know, they want that hardcover or they want, you know, something like that. So um, that information, that's where you look for that information to make sure, again, you're getting the right item for your patron. Access points and titles. So 100 field, that's your author. 
245, that's your title and subtitle and um, the author statement that you see on the book. So you've probably all run across an author that um, is displaying um, and it's not what's on the book. And there's a reason for that. So on the C field, that will be what you see on the book, but that if it's different than what's displaying in like the Smith comma Rebecca or whatever, you know, if that's different than what you see on the book, um, on the cover of the book, then their authorized term is different. So that's the difference between the 245C and the 100. Now, 95% of the time, it's gonna be the same, but that could be a reason why you see those, the difference there. Your 490 is a series statement. In your 490, I don't really have it here, but, um, and this, again, this is, gets kind of complicated, but your 490 will always have a, an accompanying 8XX field, some kind of 800 field. And, um, but the 490 is what your patron will most likely be searching for, you know, so even if this, the series has, is authorized with, you know, something in parentheses to clarify it from something else, um, that would be in your 8XX field, which, whichever it is. Um, but the 490 is what's displayed on, again, on the book itself. Your 600 is, um, is people that are mentioned in the book. So if it's a, you know, a nonfiction book, these are the people that it talks about in this book or whatever. Um, and your 650, the ever important subject heading, this is what your book is about. 655 is a genre or form heading. This is what your book is. This book is a biography. This book is about physicists. And then 700 is an added author or an illustrator or something like that. So all of these, of course, pertain to the item in hand. And um, can, these are all match points for when you search to get the right item in your patron's hands. Notes fields, there are literally 100 notes fields. But um, there are certain ones that we use most often that mean something. So your 504 is when there's a bibliographic page. Um, and again, this information is for you to be like, my patron wants this specific edition of Jane Eyre, and we have 25 records of Jane Eyre in the, in the catalog. She wants the one that specifically has the forward by Richard Shee here or whatever, you know. So this is how you're finding that information. And this is also when you search where that information is coming from. Your 505 is your contents field. It's your table of contents, essentially. And your 520 is your synopsis. Um, 520 is important in, I, I feel like 520 is one of the more important um, fields. It's all keyword searchable. So um, even fiction books need a great 520 so that um, if your patron, you know, needs something that was set in Massachusetts or something, and that happened to be, um, in the 520, and it, but it didn't make it into a subject heading field that it would still bring that up. Okay, now this, this stuff's kind of scary, but we're, we're going to touch on it a little. Um, so if you, oh, I have examples here. So if you open that bib record, the first several lines you see is just a whole bunch of jumbled words and letters, and you're like, what the heck, you know. These are called fixed fields, and they are super uber important in your ILS, especially our ILS, especially with AV materials and certain print formats. So you'll see here DVD is the icon. Why does it have that icon? Because of that 007. If that 007 wasn't there, it would be, it would not have an icon at all. If that 007 had one letter wrong or something, that could be a Blu-ray. That could be an audiobook. That could be, you know. So if your icon is displaying, especially with AV fields, your first go-to thing is going to be your 007 field. Um, your 008 field, I don't have it here, but um, your cataloger. So the 007 field, there's a wizard that will help your cataloger do, you know, make it correct. Or, um, you know, they're pretty standard. But the 008, there's, um, it's clickable in Evergreen. You can right click and you have a whole bunch of choices, you know, and you can make it, make it correct. But so um, 
with AV materials, the 007 is important for large print specifically. It's that 008 field, um, because if that 1D right there isn't there, that's going to be a print book, not a large print book. That D right there is the only thing that makes the bib record a large print bib record. I mean, the record itself will say, you know, it'll be cataloged as large print. It'll say, you know, but if you want that icon to display, it's all about the uh, fixed fields here. And if you're interested in icons and all this wonky stuff, there is going to be another presentation this afternoon about icons and how to make them display right and what's what's happening with all of that. So I encourage you to go to that. Oh, again, I don't have my notes, so I didn't know that. <laughs> this is, like I said, the this is the part where your cataloger would right click and it would be able to guide them through. But that, all of those boxes make that string of characters right there. And these strings of characters, that's what displays on the front end for your patrons. So that's, ex you know, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Whoops, okay. Okay, so here's an example of that field. So this is, again, we're looking at uh, fixed fields here. That A means it's a book. And what does, why does that matter to you? Because when you're doing searches on the front end in your OPAC and you're doing those search filters, that is because of that. So if you want, you know, however that's coded, if it's a CD, if it's a launch pad or electronic resource or something, that is how when your patrons or your staff are um, drilling down that search, that information comes from those fixed fields. Again, um, literary form. Um, like we have a big poetry contest every year. So we specifically in my library, we're very adamant about putting the poetry um, stuff in the 008 so that when we are searching in uh, the OPAC or uh, the staff end that we can click that poetry. And that's only gonna work if it's cataloged correctly with that little character in the 008 fifths field. Again, the icons, I told you about the little wizard that your cataloger can do. So that little icon there means that they can go through that and it will guide them specifically for um, what type of material it is. And again, that drives that, that icon. So why should you care about cataloging? Because it's cool. Um, more effective searching. Again, discoverability, discoverability, discoverability. Locating items on the shelves. Um, knowing about faceted searching. You know, we just had all those examples about how um, if I want the specific thing, it all translates back into those little characters that are in the bib record. So that's why your this book is not coming up in the search when you do the poetry. You know, I have I have this poetry book in my hand. Why isn't it coming up in the search results? You know, it's because it wasn't. Uh, cataloged with that correct one character. Um, knowing what fields index in Evergreen. Um, so I really wish I had my notes because that means something <laughs> and I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, run reports targeted more specifically to your needs and to work collaboratively with catalogers for efficient workflows. And like I said, where it's really cool to catalog. Um, only librarians like to search, everyone else likes to find. Um, I was just talking to someone at breakfast day before yesterday, and she was like, yeah, I was, uh, uh, you know, I worked in the library at college and I was helping students, you know, write stuff. And she goes, I realized that I just liked the research part of it. I didn't actually like, <laughs> so that's why I became a librarian. So yeah, that's part of our fun. We like to find things, not necessarily search. So I got some references here and this is my information. Now, um, I do have a cheat sheet on all of this that is like a, just a one page. Um, here are my notes fields. Here are my ID, my number fields, you know, that um, it's just a one page reference. Um, if this wasn't being wonky, I could show you, but <laughs> um, I will have that along with my slides. I will have that PDF uh, printable thing for you. It's just a 
quick reference guide so you can see maybe why something isn't doing what it's supposed to. So any questions? Okay, thank you everybody. <laughs> This probably would have been longer if I'd had my notes because I had so much more words, but.